realize this, but every day that you're alive, that you're living in this world, that you exist in this body of flesh that you have, you have a choice that when you wake up, you can make the determination which way you would go. Will you walk with God today? Will you talk with Him, spend time with Him? Will you be the type of Christian that you want to be? Or will you be religious and say a prayer, go on your way, get ready for work, leave, look for work, do those things that in the world we treat as being automatic, yet in the spiritual realm sometimes we don't treat spending time with God quite the same way. Shouldn't that be the beginning of our day, as well as the end? That from the beginning and to the end, we've walked with God, we've talked with God, that somehow today we've heard His voice. You see, hearing His voice is pretty simple. You just ask Him to speak to you, and then walk in all that you do according to what you hear. If you read a devotional, like say in your Bible, pretend you're reading in Exodus, and you flip it open and it says, go forward. If you ask me, I think you should go forward. You see, God knew today where you would be, and here's the circumstances, and he wraps them around you, and then pulls you towards himself so that he could direct you by way of either circumstance, by speaking to you, by influencing you, by pressuring you in a certain way, by opening a door and causing you to walk through it, by directly confronting you, by speaking like you and I are, where you could hear his voice, because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. You see, God isn't limited even to how he speaks, but he does speak every day. Balaam had a wonderful experience with a donkey, literally a jackass, that Spurgeon said, you know, many of us find ourselves in equal company because if God can use a jackass, he can use you and me. And in certain respect, that's true because God can speak to anything and anyone because he uses all things to cause our awareness of him to come about. So today, God is seeking really to make you aware of him, not him aware of you. He already sees you the way you are. And this morning in daily life, walk in love. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Lover, love covereth all sins. When you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Love your enemies, and do good, and lend hoping for nothing again. Rejoice not when thy enemy falls, and let not your heart be glad when he stumbles. Not rendering evil for evil, or rallying for rallying, but contrarywise, blessing. Knowing that you are thereunto called, that you should inherit a blessing. If it be possible, as much as lies within you, live peaceably with all men. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. There is no offense that has come unto you. There is no circumstance where you're called to defend yourself and to attack back anyone at all. The Sermon on the Mount proves that, and Jesus is making it very clear that throughout Scripture, God has said, I am either a living God protecting and guiding you, or I am no God, for you go about as though you live as 
as if God cannot see, God cannot hear, and God cannot rescue his people or defend them. So really, what you do determines whether you have a real God or just an idea about God. For me, I think I would choose to bless my enemies and love them and not attack back or be an advocate or trying to change the system or trying to renovate the world because the world is passing away in the lust thereof. We're called to save souls out of the world, not attack those that God has chosen to save from the world. Let your request be made known unto God. Abba, Father, all things are possible unto you. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. For this thing I besought the Lord three times, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. Hannah was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept. And she bowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your handmaiden and will give unto thy handmaiden a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. The Lord remember her. We know not what we should pray for as we ought. He shall choose our inheritance for us. Oftentimes we think we know what we want, but God knows what we need. We think we know what's best for us, but God has a purpose and a plan determined for us. That if we walk in His will as opposed to our will, then we find that there's a balance in our life that brings all of our circumstances into focus and suddenly everything that we are becomes immediately applicable to what we're doing in our life. That we find complete satisfaction that God is in the entire spectrum of what we see, what we say, what we do, and what we are because it becomes the very center of our being. If you're only partially involved with knowing God, you're only partially involved in a reality that you're not quite experiencing the fullness of what Jesus would have for you today. Take a moment and stop and pray and ask Him to show you His way and not yours.